guys, welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Diaries. My name is Martin Lang and we're here at Different Taxes and today we're going to talk about the final uh, edition of the secret series done by Pinot Ricard of different uh, distilleries. This one is the third edition for Longmorn and uh, the previous two, one that the 18 and the 23, was a double maturation. This one, the 25 year old, is a triple maturation, cast strength of 52.2 ABV uh, and 25 years old. So, a little bit of uh, the triple maturation. The previous ones was American oak barrels, just the standard barrels. The second maturation happened in a hot head. This one adds an extra barrel that is called a butt. Now a butt is 600 liters, a hot head is 300 liters, and an American barrel is 200 liters or 220 liters. Now what it does, what uh, the big different sizes that to a whiskey is a little bit of more uh, surface area or less surface area. So the bigger the barrel, the less contact with the wood means that the whiskey comes with a lighter, lighter flavor. So what they're doing, and we talked about this in the past in previous series, uh, double maturation usually like Balvini or many whiskies out there doing double maturations nowadays, they age the whiskey in American oak, giving certain uh, characteristic to the whiskey like toffee, vanilla and all that stuff, and then they age a second time into a sherry cask. Sherry cask gives more like spicy notes like cloves and cinnamon to the whiskey in itself. So it makes sense kind of like to complement those two flavors, but long morning itself is only doing American oak. Now, uh, this series is part of the Pernod Ricard series that they're doing, and they're actually going to do something for Glenlivet and, and other distilleries. And it's just to showcase what they can do with the whiskies that go into the Shivers blends. Long Morn, a little bit of history, we talked about this, but just in case you haven't seen the other episodes, just a refresher. Established in 1894 by John Duff. Uh, after two years, three years, uh, the distillery was so successful that they opened another one that is called Ben Ryak. Uh, unfortunately, at the late, in the late 1900s, uh, 1800s, um, the whiskey boom collapsed and the economy collapsed, so he had to sell all the distilleries and he sold it to James Grant. James Grant, obviously owner of the Grants, uh, started using Longmorn ex exclusively for the blend and became a mainly blended uh, whiskey kind of thing. Uh, in the 1970s, it got bought by the Shivers uh, brothers and then in the, uh, later on it got bought by Pernod Ricard. Now, as I said, Longmore is the main uh, whiskey that goes into the Shivers blend, uh, but they do have a single bottling that is a 16-year-old and the 23. The 16-year-old got taken over, uh, took over the 15-year-old, the previous releases. The one thing that I may have forgot to mention in previous videos as well is the packaging. Longbourn, uh, the 15-year-old, the 16-year-old and the 23-year-old comes in a very, very different packaging to this particular bottle. As a matter of fact, I really particularly like the 16-year-old packaging with a little leather bottle. We didn't, we've done a review, you can find it on, on other videos. So back to the whiskey in itself, uh, it's a 25 year old uh, triple maturation with 52.2 ABV. That's quite high for, for a 25 year old. Uh, we got the ball here, this one as well, like the other two editions, we had to bring directly from, from the UK. You can see the label there. Uh, you cannot get, it's really, really hard to get into uh, in Australia for some reason, because it's actually delicious. We talked about the 18 being super fruity with pears and peaches, and then the, out, the 23 was such a different whiskey as well. All together, we're looking at a lot more spicy, like cinnamon, uh, like, like cloves, and that's incredible because it's only a five, well, five years is a fair bit of time, but it's not that much in whiskey terms. Uh, the other thing as well, all the bottles are uh, numbered. Um, so the, the, the uh, 23 was 6,000 something, and this one, Luckily, weirdly enough, it's only bottle number 13. So that's a quite a special number, I believe. So the color didn't change much, to be honest, compared to the other ones. It's still quite the same semi-dark uh, for American oak uh, color. Um, but the interesting part is the 50, 52 ABV. I'm super keen because the other two bottles um, came at 48%. So, but, and as I said before in previous videos, it doesn't taste like a 48% whiskey. So I'm keen to see how, how this matches to the other ones, especially since uh, I never tried this before either. So like, should be, should be quite interesting. Wow, yeah, that smells pretty special. Yeah, well, you can drink this. 
this is, doesn't taste like a 52 ABV uh, whiskey. This also is non-chin filtered, just in case you don't know what non-chin filter means. It's uh, like back in the 80s and the 70s whiskies where all of them, most of them were non-chin filtered. So when you put ice in it, the oils come out and it kind of like goes a little bit cloudy. So marketing thought that people were thinking that that kind of makes the whiskey look like it's off, but it's not. It's just the oil concentrate. It's called a luge, basically. So non-chill filter, so later on in the 80s and the 90s, they actually introduced chill filtering in which they freeze whiskey. Uh, so all the oils get concentrated and then they take all of that out. A lot of people like, uh, disagree or agree the different parts that... Um, of the story but basically people believe that chill filtering a whiskey will take flavor out of the whiskey so a lot of people put on the labels non chill filter meaning that it keeps all the flavors and aromas from it uh, this is incredible whiskey and it does not taste a 52 per ABV not for sure it's not as spicy as the 23 year old I think it's um, just a it's older yeah it's a more elegant, it has a little bit more finesse, but at 52, again, I can't express enough how easy to drink these whiskeys. Thank you very much uh, for listening, and we'll see you next time. Slanjaba.